uh, meeting is a follow-up from a meeting that uh, a talk that I gave at a homeschool meeting a few months ago. So we didn't actually do a lot of uh, homeschooling talking because there were some themes that I felt were very important for all of the people in this neighbourhood to understand and think about. So um, recently, not an incident, just a a question in Tarabia came up and that question, the answers given to that question I thought would be a very good example to help explain something that we're trying to convey to you and people are not getting very well. Some people are starting to pick it up and others are not and uh, so I wanted to uh, have this talk. I talked to Um Khair and said, you know, that incident that happened, I thought it would be a good basis to illustrate this matter of the tabi of the children that we're trying to convey. So there are some of the... We, this uh, previous talk was actually recorded, but given that most people may not have had the opportunity to listen to it, and uh, also, as they say in Arabic, uh, there's, there's benefit in repeating things, that I will give a summary of what was the content of our last talk. So, um, I'm going to... I have, a, I have the same piece of paper which I gave to somebody, and I came back to my house and it crumpled up. These, uh, this is... You have to, this is the mother of this child. If you could just keep her with you, inshallah. So, the uh, I quoted a hadith last time that uh, we came together, and that was "Men lam yishkur al qalil, lam yishkur al kasir." Whoever is not grateful for a little, is not grateful for a lot, for plenty. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَشْكُرَ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَشْكُرَ اللَّهِ And whoever is not grateful to people is not grateful to Allah. وَتَحَدِّثْ بِنْيَامَةِ اللَّهِ شُكْرِ And to speak of the blessings of Allah Most High is gratitude, it's shukr. And وَتَرْكَهُ كُفْرٌ And leaving the speaking of the blessings of Allah is ingratitude. It doesn't mean kufr in terms of belief. Well, jama'a rahma. The group is a mercy. And well, fulkusu adab. And being separated and divided is, an, is a torment. It's an adab. This hadith has a number of things in it that are related to our talk. But the reason that uh, I brought it was that in order to convey the points that I needed to convey in the talk, I have to mention some of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on myself and my husband and Um Khair and Shaykh Ashraf. And I, I definitely wanted to convey that that was only from the aspect of mentioning the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. Not that we have any superiority over anyone, but the reason that in some areas, uh, one of the things that were brought up in our last talk is that the advice that we're giving you in relation to the children is not often being taken seriously because we don't have children. So I had to mention to people that for a lot of the people coming from the West, uh, you live in a society where you don't grow up with children. You live in a, I lived like this because this is how I experienced my life while I was growing up in New Zealand is my brothers were close in age to me, a couple of years difference, either way, I'm in the middle. And uh, we grew up with children our own age, or similar, close. And so we went through our whole life, we went to our primary or elementary school, we went to high school, and we went to, uh, uh, after our school, we were always with people who were close in our age. And we didn't actually grow up with babies and small children. However, uh, uh, I left uh, New Zealand at a very young age. I was 19. And I've spent the last uh, 
in over 26 years in living in four different countries. So I lived in, I spent some time in five different countries with my family in Kosovo. And with, uh, I lived in Turkey for a year and a half and I lived in Egypt for three years. And I've lived in this country for the last 22 years. And from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, that our experience of coming into the Muslim land was one of being totally divorced from our Western culture and background. And my first sheikh, who was very uh, strict and disciplined, did not allow us even to visit. So there was a 10-year, 12-year period where we did not even go back and intermix with them. So the only Western person I had was association with in those years was Um Khayyad, because we met in Egypt and we lived together in one room in a dormitory. So Adam and him, that uh, our exposure, uh, our, we were very disconnected from the ideas and cultural norms that we had grown up with. To the extent that, like something that your your thoughts and your mind and the patterns that you have in your mind, they go round and round and round and round, and you base your life on the repetition of uh, the models that you see. Those thought patterns and that criteria was eventually wiped out, and so we lived in a number of different countries and we traveled to many countries and as a woman I have been in many people's homes and seen the inside of the <coughs> homes and the way their children are and the way the people are behaved. And in the last 10 years the specialty of our business has been the NAS. <laughs> Dealing with the NAS and <coughs> children are little NAS. So the accumulation of that is that we have more life experience than you do and in general, in general, we have more Islamic knowledge than you do. So, and that is like a stuff for Allah, it's not, uh, it has nothing to do with uh, saying, Anna, it's not, this is, this is bin yamatillah. And I have no other way to explain this issue without doing that. <coughs> So the common, what we summed up in our last talk was that we have here in this community a extremely wonderful opportunity and that is to raise a generation of Muslims who are constantly consolidated in their Islam. They have no other world view. I mean, if they go out of the neighborhood, they see some things, but they, they're so overwhelmed with their Islamic worldview <coughs> that even the things that they see, if they make a trip back to England or a trip back to Canada or, or they go outside of the hay, it's wiped out quickly because they're reconsolidated. They go to school and they hear about Allah and Islam. They go to their friends. There's no TV and their friends for the most part are exposed to the same Islamic output as themselves. They come to the Zawiya, they go to the mosque, they have parties, they do a lot of activities and they're always reminded over and over and over and over and over again every single day that they are Muslim and that they believe in Allah and that they should be living for Islam. However, the observation that we have made over that we want to convey to you is that this opportunity is being wasted and uh, to a large degree. And a part of that reason is that a lot of people have come here from the West and they're still very deeply tied into those cultural norms and they're projecting them here and in the tarbiya of the children without realizing it. And they're depending on literature that 
comes from people who do not think like we do. And so, and they're taking advice and models and patterns to follow from those people. And there's no way that the way that uh, a lot of Tarabiya books present, there is some practical information that is <coughs> shared in all human experience across the board. But there are a lot of findings there that you are not seeing because you haven't had enough of a disconnection from those Western norms. So, uh, as we pointed out in the last talk, the uh, average Western family now has only one or two children. So, literature that comes out of a society that does not believe in Allah and the last day, where they do not have children anymore, is often focused around developing the nest of that child and indulging the child. And that's what we see happening here, is that we have indulged children. And indulged people are not people who sacrifice. This is the problem. And uh, we touched on this last time, this is the main point that we want to expand on here, is that this Ummah is an Ummah Mubaraka, Ummah Muhammad. And this Ummah will never be overcome. And this Ummah will have continuity. And so there have been times when this Ummah has ruled the world. And there have been times when this Ummah has been punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has been uh, overcome by non-Muslims, and which is similar to the time in which we live. But there's always a continuity of Salihin, Ulama, Mujahid. As-salatu ala al-Nabi wa-salamu ala al-Rasul al-Shafi'i